Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from azureautomation.com and welcome to the next lecture of our Selenium with Java series. And in this lecture, we are going to be talking about the continuation of the page object model code that we have been talking for past couple of lectures. And in this lecture, we're going to be doing exactly the same thing. So we are going to see how we can uh, further write the page object model code for the rest of the uh, pages that we have been working uh, like the employee list page home page and login page and we'll also see how we can transform the custom methods that we have written in our earlier uh, lectures so you know that we have started transforming the page object model code in our last lecture uh, from this page object model uh, definition like how you do it from here all the way to this using the find by uh, annotation uh, and then we have started making our code more readable because we have started to see that this is directly using web element instead of using the by type and we also saw that using the web element as a uh, variable to identify the element the find element operation is happening over here in the find by uh, annotations interface uh, and also uh, it helps us to write a better code because you can see in the perform enter text custom method that we have got we don't really have to necessarily pass the web driver as a parameter we can directly pass the web element uh, of the locator and then we can perform these operation which is very very straightforward so that that is how things are uh, happening until our last lecture and we also transformed one of the page which is the employee page from the existing pattern of using the page of the model code to the find by uh, annotation and we also know that the find by annotation works in conjunction with the page factory factory class with the init elements method so these are all we discussed in our last lecture and now in this lecture we are going to see how we can further write the same kind of code in other pages i wanted to do this in this lecture as well because i wanted you to have a clear solid understanding of what we are trying to achieve because this is one of the most important Thing that you need to know while you write Selenium with Java code and because uh, this is a bit more complex and convoluted you may easily get away with understanding of what's really happening uh, very quickly so I wanted you to align with what we're trying to do uh, so in that sense I will go with the employee list page I hope you have already did that by yourself if not, we'll just try to do this exactly the same way what we tried doing it. See, all we have did in the employee page over here is that we are trying to use the uh, page factory.init element and then we are using the find by, right? Let's exactly do the same way. So you can see that uh, we can go to this uh, constructor and we can say page factory.init elements and here we can pass the uh, driver and this page is what I'm trying to initialize, right? That's the first thing we need to do. And for the locator here, for the create new, I can just say add find by. And the way I'm identifying is using the link text. So if you just do control space, you get different locators that you can uh, use to identify the control, which is the link text here. And I'm identifying using create new link text. So I can do that. When I do this, I can now get rid of this identifier. And instead of by type, I can just use i web element. Uh, sorry, web element uh, over here, All right? Uh, so that's how I can identify. And you can see the by type is completely gone because we don't really require them anymore. So that is the first thing. And then you can see that we get an error here because the uh, the find element by uh, thing is not even required anymore because it is taken care by this attribute and it's a web element type. So what we can now do is we can just say UI element extensions dot, we're trying to do a perform click operation. Uh, and over here, I need to pass the web element locator, which is nothing but the BTN create new. That's all. You see that now it is very, very super simple. So we have transformed another page as well. 
And now we can do the exact same thing for the rest of the class as well. So I'm gonna go to the home page, uh, and over here, let's do that. So let's, I'm gonna say add find by, and we're finding using the link text. So I'm gonna say link text is equal to uh, login, something like that. And I can get rid of this. We don't need it. And I'm gonna make this as i web element. Sorry, web element. And we'll say page factory dot init elements of driver of this. Uh, and we can just say UI element extensions dot perform click of the uh, LNK login. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for here as well. So you can see that this is how things works over here. So I can easily uh, go and perform these operations like that. Uh, and now if I go to the login link, which is the last page that we have got, uh, and over here, I'm going to say page factory dot init elements of driver and this. Oops. So I'm going to copy, paste it here. It's going to be name that we are trying to identify for the username. So we don't need this one. Yeah, let's make this as web element. I'm going to probably duplicate this because this is more easier for me than trying to write it. This is going to be CSS. Cool. Uh, and finally, we're going to perform a send key operation here, uh, which is going to be from the UI extension dot perform enter text of the locator, which is going to be the txt username. And um, the value is going to be username. Uh, and similarly, I'm going to do, oops, uh, sorry. I'm going to say password, which is going to be txt password. And finally, I'm going to perform a click operation. So perform click, which is going to be of uh, btn login. There we go. So now we have completed every single thing that we need for our code uh, in the page object model. And now I can just go to the uh, the UI element extension over here. I can even get rid of this to a web element, whichever has by locator, I can just get rid of them and I can just replace that with locator. Uh, and even this one, we can just get rid of them to web element and we can give it just the locator. So you can see that every single method is now being transformed and we don't really require by and web element here. So I can get rid of this uh, importing the package. Uh, and now if I go to Selenium test, there will be a bunch of failures, as you can see, uh, which is expected because we don't really need them anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, and hopefully that makes more sense. So, so now this same code that we had uh, for the existing page of the model code should also work fine without any problem. So now if I just, uh, so we already have a breakpoint. So if I try to debug this test, you should see that this code should also ideally work with the new page of the model code and the new modified uh, custom methods that we have written and everything should just work as expected. So let's see what's really happening. I could see that uh, uh, the login is happening. The user creation is also happening. And hopefully, there we go. You see that it's all just done. And if you just run it again, it performs a log off and you see that the log off is also done. It's all working fine. So this is how we can do a page object model code and also modify the custom methods, uh, which is this one from our uh, Selenium code. But there is also one of the argument which people say like, uh, guess what, Karthik, um, these things, if I don't have a custom method, how what is the better way for me to write it but guess what you you can do it as well you know what um if you don't have this uh this operation here if i just go to the home page we don't want to perform with the ui extension whatever dot perform click 
guess what? How do you write it? It is going to be even more straightforward. It's like lnk login dot click. That's all. And similarly for the employee list, you can just say employee list dot click. You can do this way as well without you having to write any custom method. But the power of the custom method comes in is while you are going to perform a bunch of action uh, and you're going to be doing some business logic inside the custom method. And that's when the UI element extension comes very, very handy. Because I'm sure you may have this question running in your mind like, uh, Kathik, why do we even have this? Because this even UI element extension or perform enter text is just bringing up an extra wrapper on the top of the already easily accessible methods. Why are you trying to overcomplicate this? Well, I, I got you what you're saying, but the thing is, if you wanted to perform these three operations with just one single method, why not just use the custom method? And similarly, if you have a situation where in a big grid, you're going to be performing certain operation, for instance, even in our applications, we have got this grid. And if I wanted to go and click this edit link, it is not very straightforward because you have to identify the columns that you have got, the row that you have got, and the matching column name that you're looking for, and the operation that you're trying to perform, like clicking on the edit, benefit or delete, whatever that you want to do. So you are going to be doing quite a lot of different operations into that custom method and performing those operations. So for sure, during those uh, operations, you should have a custom method in place instead of you doing all the operation in your action method, which is nothing but your homepage action method. Because you see that this action method should only be responsible for performing an action on the UI. It should not have the logic of how you perform the action on the UI, right? Like the click operation is more like an uh, and direct calling of the Serenium's API. But if you have your custom business logics being baked in the custom method, which is the UI element extension, and you perform the click without telling the action method like how you do that, that is where your success is. Essentially, you are trying to wrap or encapsulate the complexity on this perform click method and you take away all these complexity out from the action method. That is the whole idea of how you write it. So that is why I was keep telling you that you can directly even use Selenium's own uh, methods. But if you have a situation where you wanted to do things more specifically based on the business need, then why not just write a custom method? And that's when custom method gets very, very important. And this is one of the questions which has been asked by students from me in different courses that I have got. Like how, uh, Karthik, what is, the re re what is the reason even behind this uh, this um, custom method? And that this is the reason that I'm talking about, which we have. And there are even more things that you can do with custom methods. Guess what, guys? You can also do something like... Uh, something like fluent way of writing the code and even fluent way of uh, performing the custom method operation. I've also covered every single details of fluent methods and how do you write fluent custom methods in my course of Udemy. So if you just go to Udemy and go and search Udemy of Karthik, which is this one. Uh, and if you go to my uh, advanced framework development with Senium Java course, which is somewhere hiding uh, in the list of courses that I have got, which I guess is this one, you can see that I have the section over here, which tells you how you can develop your own custom controls of Selenium uh, and also how you can build with a framework. This is a bit more complex than what we are discussing right now. Uh, so it is very, very important that you can you can utilize the power of the custom controls uh, in Selenium and you can make these things happen. And there are a lot of things that has been covered in this particular course uh, and also how you can enhance the way that you can test your application. Uh, so that's all been covered in this particular course. But again, it's completely out of the scope of what we're discussing right now. But custom methods are, are super important for you to have them in place. 
Well, as I said, we have almost covered every single details that is required for the page object model and how you can enhance the way that you can do uh, your testing using page object model. Starting our next lecture, we are going to see how we can move away from this main method that we have been using all these days into a test library. And just a heads up, if you have already worked with any test libraries, I would highly recommend you to try implementing the same code in the test library. If not, in our next lecture, next session, we are going to be talking about test libraries and how we can use these test libraries or test runner libraries to be specific to be replacing this uh, main method concept that we have got. Catch you in the next one.